I already shot the intros and outros for this video like a week ago or something. Uh, somehow I managed to lose all the footage. I don't know how that happened. It's probably because I'm a genius. Uh, but yeah, in this video I'm gonna be working on the animation for the next SFH video again. I got new glasses by the way. Okay, no one cares. Okay, so what I've been doing is I've been working a lot on this MIDI piano roll sequence thing. And this is the current state of that project. So I actually have the notes playing as they go. And I also have this nice scaling, random scaling thing going on here, both uh, in the front of the notes and also after they play, they kind of fade away. So yeah, this has been going really well, actually. And what I think I'll try to solve today is how to get the, let me see, how to achieve the effect of this alley environment kind of fading away back here somehow. I don't know if I even spoke about this fading effect in the last video, but yeah, the idea is to have the piano roll sequence floating above the ground here. And the notes are playing and the camera is also moving forward with the notes towards the street there. And at some point the back of the alley starts to fade away into a black void. I know how to do that with animation nodes, but I kind of don't want to use animation nodes because the, it's not very future-proof right now in Blender 2.8. And there's the Everything Nodes project coming and the support for the animation nodes add-on wouldn't be continued, I imagine, after that. But the Everything Nodes thing still isn't here. So I really only have the basic tools of Blender if I want to have this project be as future-proof as possible. I don't know why it's important to me. I'll probably never come back to this project after I've finished it, but I kind of also like the challenge of just using the basic Blender package as it comes. So I'll try to figure something out. So what's this one cube doing here? Uh, well, I started by thinking about ways of actually dissolving the like the geometry of the environment, like I would probably do it in animation modes. But that would be very difficult to achieve without animation nodes. So I came up with this other idea of having just a bunch of black cubes along the alley, like dotted around randomly with a particle system or something. And then making the material of the cubes just pure black so that it would look something like this in the final render so you can imagine yeah I actually have the animation here so the camera goes forward and these cubes start appearing like like this and they sort of eat up the environment as they scale up from zero I could uh, get that working probably with uh, some sort of driver system I will probably have to make a script to do the heavy lifting with adding all the drivers and stuff but this would be a system that works, hopefully. And there is actually <laughs> a couple downsides. Like you can see, you can see the ambient occlusion effect creates this shadow looking thing. But I actually think that's not a problem because I think it fits nicely in the original idea of the environment starting to disappear from behind here. It could also be nice looking as like dissolving topology type of thing. But I think this is actually a nice and a bit different way of visualizing that. And it might even add sort of a claustrophobic feel to the thing. I think it would work nicely if I get it to work, that is. So I'll use drivers to make this, as I said. Uh, like here, you can see that we can control the X scale of the cube. And I can add a driver to that X scale property and I can make an expression to set it the way I want and I can make this cube uh, read another object's location for example to set the scale based on that location so that way I can have one controller object defining the scale of like hundreds of cubes but the problem is that once I've done this one driver I'll then have to copy this and paste it to these other scale variables also and then I'll have to manually make 
the drivers for all the hundreds of other cubes also because because they'll need to read the controller objects location with some individual parameters because otherwise they'll just all appear and disappear at the same time so that would take forever and so that's why i'll have to code a script to do all that driver adding for me Okay, that went surprisingly painlessly. So I have this um, arrow object here, and I have a bunch of cubes here. And if I move this arrow, you can see that the cubes sort of individually scale up and down uh, according to the location of the arrow. So now I only have to animate this arrow going forward, and the cubes will sort of appear as it goes along. Obviously I'll have much more cubes than this, but you get the point. There is a couple problems. Uh, I don't like how abrupt the scaling is. Like it starts and stops very abruptly. It's linear. I think I'll try to make some sort of a smoother interpolation, but I totally don't know if I know how to do that. We'll see. And also I'd like to add some randomness to the position where they start to scale up and down. Right now it's like they follow the location of the arrow exactly and I'd like each of them to have a little bit of randomness in their timing. Let's see if I can make that happen. Okay, it took a while, but I managed to do everything I was hoping for. So again, I have these cubes and this arrow object, and when I run this script, the drivers get added, and when I move this arrow, the cubes appear very nicely and a bit randomly also. It's a lot smoother than it was before, and they also stay a bit different sizes each. That's also controlled randomly. I also made this handy little uh, other script which removes all the drivers so that I don't have to do that manually because that would be annoying so then I can maybe tweak some parameters here and run it again yeah it works nicely now I just need to do the actual wall of cubes here and I'll maybe also try to get some actual node blocks going on here Okay, so I actually decided to first work on the scene a bit more, make it a bit more nice looking, add some details. Uh, I'm trying to keep the detail level reasonably low, just so I can actually finish this someday and get it out. But yeah, it needed some work. And I actually realized I could quite easily use this newly coded driver system to make the uh, disappearing geometry effect I was talking about earlier. I would just have to modify the all the environment objects a bit to make it work, but I could totally do that. But I think I'll stick with the appearing cubes thing. I've actually grown to like the idea, so I think I'll at least try it like that first and see how it looks. I've been thinking a bit about this uh, 3D piano roll note block thing. And like I think I said in the previous video, at first I didn't really like the idea of using this tool in like the final Songs for Humanity animations. I just wanted to have it mainly for this second channel to make nicer visualizations and comparisons etc. for the composing periods. But, but now that I've been thinking about it, I kind of feel like this might be actually a good direction for these final animations also because the you know the main idea of the entire project songs for humanity project is to try to bring people together and try to uh, to increase people's sense of unitedness that they have towards all the other people globally that's the core philosophy for the project uh, in addition to inspiring people to think positively about the future of humanity. That's the other thing. So that's the main idea and I'm trying to get there with music and with animation. But the problem I still face 
is that the animation takes a lot more time than the music, even though I'm always trying to make it more simple. And I feel like if I make it so simple that it only takes somewhere around the same time as the music does, it's gonna be so boring and so uh, un uneventful if I have to make everything manually. And that's why I've started to think that maybe this piano roll automatically generated thing is not so bad after all, because it's visually interesting, it lets you see the music in a visual form and anticipate what's coming. And it's also very uh, quick after you've done the coding to get the automatic uh, generation. And I definitely don't want to lose all of the uh, personal, customized, manually done feel that that I've had in the previous two videos. I, I want to include that because it I think it's very important for the emotional response to that music, that it, that it's not completely just automatically generated. But I think I can keep that element by just modeling the environments by hand, like I've done previously. Because modeling static environments is way less work than doing complex animation manually. But yeah, as you can see, I got a lot done in this session, and I'll now show you the final result of this work, sort of the first clip of the first scene of the music video. But yeah, thanks for watching and I'll see you next time.